Okay, so in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to program the enemy AI and how to get it to essentially damage the player. So first we're going to go to our content and create a new folder. You don't have to, but I'm going to. Uh, just because it's neater. We're going to call it Zombie AI. And then we're going to right click beside it. Create a new blueprint class. I'm going to search for AI controller because it's not in these. Which is down here. And this is going to determine the AI of the zombie character that we're going to make. I'm just going to call this Zombie AI. And save that. Then you want to double click to open it up. It's going to full screen this. And then you want to go to the event graph. Get event begin play. Drag out from that pane and set timer by function name. And this is going to call the function which we're going to make now in a minute. And after that you want to type in custom event because we're going to make a custom event. And we're going to call it track player. So this custom event is basically what this function is going to call and it's going to determine what happens. So we're going to drag out from the pin here and search for AI move to and this is going to determine where the AI moves and then we're going to get the control get control pawn for the zombie pawn and we're going to connect the return value up to the pawn up here so it's going to determine or not determine, it's going to assign the pawn as the zombie and then we're going to get player controller or oh, sorry get player character not controller and then we're going to connect the return value from that up to the target actor so the AI is going to move to the target actor which we've assigned to for as the player character and then once that's done you want to go up to your function name in the set timer by function type in your function name track player that is spelled yep and spelled correct and we're going to set the time for one and we're going to set it to loop so it will const constantly reoccur and then we're just going to close that and then beside zombie AI we're going to right click get another blueprint class but this time it's going to be a character and we're going to just call this zombie character and this will be our zombie and what the AI is going to attach to so we're going to open this up and over a mesh we're going to use the zombie anim blueprint that was made in the animation tutorial and then we're going to set our mesh as the war zombie for our zombie and then in character movement we are going to go for max acceleration so we're just going to search that max acceleration we're going to change that to 224 and the max walk speed to be 375 and now you want to go over to your capsule component and sorry, get rid of max and we're going to go for the capsule half height which is going to determine how high it is and set that as 115 you can adjust this to whatever size you want and the radius to be 50 and then we're going to select a zombie we're going to move him down so he touches the bottom of the capsule and then you're going to press spacebar and rotate him so he faces towards the blue arrow and this is going to determine what way he's facing when he's put into the game and just compile and save and then we're going to go back to the capsule component scroll all the way down to the bottom and go to our events and click the plus on on component hit so once the capsule component hits something uh, it will do the rest of the code that we've determined so we're going to drag out from the pin to cast to first person character or whatever your character is called and then from other actor we're going to connect that up to the object and then from the first person character we're going to type in branch which is going to set a condition for us and from as the first person character we're going to get the health so get health for the first person character's health and then we're going to drag out from the health and we're going to type float and less than so if the health so if the target's health if the first person character's health is less than or sorry not less than if it's greater than zero then this is going to be the condition 
and we're also going to drag out from health again and type in float and minus and we're going to set it as 0 0.1 because the health is done up in tenths and a float, ver float variable which uses decimals and then we're also going to drag out from the minus and set health if you could spell just click context sensitive it's not showing up and we're going to set the player health so and if this condition is true it will set the health and the first person character is the target and then we're going to put a delay on that so that all this health doesn't lose at once continuously and we're going to make the delay one second so what this will do is once the capsule hits the first person character which is it's assigned from the other actor and as the object and um, we use a branch to make a condition so the condition is if the target's health is greater than zero and um, once the component hits the player it'll minus uh, 0 0.1 which is one tenth of its health and then it'll set the new health and this only works if the condition is true and the condition is if it's greater than zero so once the health is below zero this condition won't happen and once the health the new he new health is set a delay happens and we'll just show you that now and how it works so we're going to adjust the camera we're going to put a first person zombie er, not first person zombie we're going to put a zombie character in here oh actually I forgot one more thing you want to go to your zombie character and as the AI in the pawn section as the AI controller class you want to change that to your zombie AI which we created so compile and save and all the zombies in the game so we're going to press play and then we're going to run up oh one more thing I forgot sorry about that you want to go to your volumes in your modes here in the place panel and you want to get a nav mesh balance. Now this will determine the area the zombie is allowed to enter. So we're going to select that and we're going to scale it to as large as the map because that's how the area that we want them in. And we just scale. Now that should be the length of it. So now if you press P you will see the area he's able to interact in. So we're going to save that and then we're going to play and go as well. Yep, the zombie's chasing us and as you see because I'm touching him I'm losing health. And there's a delay of one second before I lose health again. And that is the tutorial. Uh, good luck for the rest of your project and thank you for watching.